FIFO report is a horror show. Well, we knew it would be bad, and it was. The inquiry found women frequently have to deal with sexual harassment and sexual assault, with many incidents ignored or overlooked by employers. One woman described being knocked unconscious in her donga and waking up to find her pants around her ankles. Deputy Liberal leader Libby Metham, who chairs the parliamentary committee that wrote the report, detailed instances of unwanted touching, sexual comments, provocative photo requests and grooming. And worse. There is a practice known as shoveling, where iron ore is dumped on the cab of trucks operated by women who didn't comply with sexual requests. Another report, another example of the crap women have had to put up with at work. I'm talking about on the back of the Jenkins report in Canberra. Exactly. It's also the culmination of decades of light touch regulation on the resources companies because we thought we could rely on them to do the right thing. And usually they do unless they're blowing up ancient Aboriginal heritage sites, or dodging tax, or exploding the state's gas system, or sacking staff to protect the bonuses of executives. They did get the COVID response right. It showed that when they need to act fast to get on top of a problem, they can, if it's in their interest to do so because it might cost them money not to. Yeah, well, they say they acted swiftly on the sex harassment issue too. They made it look like they did. They came out very strong, united front. But in the early days of this story breaking, they tried to spin their way out of trouble. The dark arts of PR management were being deployed on an industrial scale. These aren't the droids you're looking for. These aren't the droids we're looking for. When reporter Caitlin Rintel started breaking these stories, the response was less than up front. They were initially denying there was a problem. Do you reckon they knew there was a problem? If they didn't see it, it would have been because they purposefully didn't look. BHP admitted it had sacked 48 FIFO workers in the past two years for sexual misconduct at WA mine sites. How does that not get elevated to executive level? The rumour is that a very senior executive at one company, I'm not going to say which one, was aware of this problem a year before Rintel started writing about it. He was so concerned about reports of sexual abuse on his FIFO sites, he asked executives at other companies whether they had the same problem. Well, they've got nowhere to hide now because the government is all over them. The report has called for very heavy regulation. An industry-wide workers' register or another mechanism such as an industry-wide accreditation modelled on the Working With Children card. They're pushing for a forum to document the experiences of victims of historical workplace sexual harassment. The new regime will be administered by an army of bureaucrats, hopefully different bureaucrats to the ones who handed out just 13 improvement notices, despite there being 164 reports of sex assault, harassment and bullying in the state's resources sector since 2015. Whoever the new public service overlords are, there's one thing for certain. At some point, they'll be working for BHP, Rio, Woodside, FMG or any of the other big mining or energy companies. Join me. The gamekeepers usually become poachers because there's a lot more money in poaching. How much more? Well, let's say you're a reasonably senior public servant in the Department of Mines and Petroleum. Level 9 Executive Director might make 160, 180 grand a year. You're doing your job really well as that Executive Director. You're a pain in the ass for business because you know every regulation and the ins and outs of every bit of legislation. You pull them up on every transgression of the law. You're like the Elliot Ness of the WA Public Service. It's against the law, gentlemen. And then Chevron knocks on your door and says, we would like you to work for us for $300,000 a year and a bonus. I'm going out there for myself. So the competent public servants get poached and they apply their inside knowledge to help the companies they had once pleased. Well, you're the biggest pain in the ass in WA. Why aren't they poaching you? <laughs> That's a question I ask myself every time I'm in the clean skin aisle at Dan Murphy's. <laughs> The upshot for taxpayers is we end up with a less qualified public service around which business runs rings. If you don't believe me, we have a powerful case in point in the recent sale of the Landgate building in Midland. The government sold the building to construction firm Giorgio. The government needed to spend $12 million on refurbishment and didn't want to do that, so sold it for $17.3 million. It turns out that Rita Safiotti's press statement back in March didn't give us the whole picture. We knew that the government was leasing back space in the building. We didn't know it would be for $85 million. Minister, 
Will you table the financial analysis support that supports the sale of this asset, including justification for the claim of a 12 million saving over the course of the lease? The government agreed to rent the building for 15 years for a total of 85 mil. We're paying 5.7 million a year until the year 2036 to avoid an upfront cost of 12 million bucks. Guys are getting squeezed hard. Now let's say the Giorgio Group spends the full 12 mil on a refurbishment. They won't because it's been done in-house and they'll do all the work themselves so there'll be no markup. But let's say the whole thing costs 30 million bucks. 5.7 million in income from a $30 million investment is a 19% return. Given that normal rental yield of around 5% of buildings for buildings of this value would normally be around $1.4 million per year. That's the kind of yield you get on high-risk, shit-or-bust investments like crypto or junior mining stocks. Or divorcing Rupert Murdoch. <laughs> Jerry earned it. The Giorgio Group is getting 19% without a requirement to have spent six years giving a geriatric billionaire <laughs> sponge baths. I, uh, help, Smithers, I'm sinking. Plus, and importantly, the Landgate deal is guaranteed by the Government of Western Australia. It's the safest investment you can make. It's money in the bank. If you put the money in the bank, incidentally, you might get 3%, so that puts 19% in perspective. It's the kind of deal that makes you rich, which the Giorgio Group is. Wow. It sometimes makes sense for a company to rent rather than own its building because the rent is tax deductible. But the state government doesn't pay tax, so there's no deduction to claim. It's dead money. So why did they do it? That's what the opposition wants to know. The available information would indicate that the government has sold this office space at a discount of over $40 million. The deal was done under a new framework called a market-led proposal. This is where business comes to government and says... Can I come before you good people tonight with an idea? And we get sucker-punched... Oh, it's not for you. It's more of a Shelbyville idea. Because the public servants aren't as commercially savvy as the multi-billion dollar companies they are dealing with. And so through all that analysis, they came with an analysis. Rita, you haven't been led by the market. You've been led by the nose. And Rita's in charge of Metronet. Yeah. Mano, don't! Don't indeed. I'm Ben Harvey. For more up late, click the subscribe button below.